Well, if you missed last week's show, you missed a nice goodbye said by Steve Dobbs. He's moving on to some other opportunities. I'm Sue Gray, Extension Horticulture Agent from Tulsa County, and I'll be filling in on Oklahoma Gardening for a while. And as always, one of the best things we feel that we offer on Oklahoma Gardening is a show that runs every week with current research-based information based on our growing conditions here in Oklahoma. And one of those things that you need to be doing right now is putting in a fall garden. Or you might think that you're kind of burned out from gardening, but if you'll take a little time, plant some beans and coal crops, you'll have a real bonus come October. So let's get started with some fall planting. As you get ready to put in a fall garden, of course the first thing on all of our minds right now is the heat. And that's the thing you want to consider when you're thinking about putting in plants or putting in seeds. So one of the first things I'm going to do before we get started is take this basket of vegetable seed and put it down in the shade so it'll stay cool. You don't want to leave those sitting out in the sun. And certainly you want to keep them during the summertime stored someplace cool and dry. Right now I've got some transplants of broccoli, cauliflower, and um, cabbage. And we've fixed up what might look like a rather elaborate setup to plant these. But again, keep on your mind that these are cool weather plants. We're planting them in the hottest time of year. They've grown in cool conditions, so they need a little bit of babying. And so we've set up in our raised bed garden an irrigation hose. We've put hoops up over which we'll be putting shade cloth. And then on top of that, we want to keep things cool. Um, we'll also be adding some remay. That's the floating row covers that we use a lot in the spring and fall for frost protection, but this time we're going to use them for insect protection. As you know, not only is it a challenge to plant a fall garden, beating the heat, trying to keep the soil cool and moist, but also the insects are at the peak of their population. They're well established out in the garden. And if we're going to defeat things like flea beetles, leaf hoppers, cabbage loopers, we need to screen them out for at least a few weeks until these plants get better established. And so to help me out in getting all this planted today and get the plants in quickly is DJ Duncan. And DJ is one of our OKG volunteer ambassadors. And time is everything in getting these in because they were grown in a greenhouse, they've been kept in the shade. We want to get them down in the soil as quickly as possible. Now with any of these transplants, you'll notice that they're fairly leggy. It's hard to grow a nice short transplant in July and August in Oklahoma. Even if you're in a greenhouse and you have a cooling system, that's a real challenge. And so we want to plant them to where that first true leaf is almost buried in the soil. The growing point of this broccoli transplant is actually up here. And you could bury it that deep if you wanted to, but I think we'll go up to about here. And then we're going to add some cottonseed mulch on top of that. But the key is, let me find my, trans, my trowel here, the key is to get these in to a nice rich soil that has plenty of organic matter. And fortunately, this is the bed where we had some, trans, some tomatoes this spring. And remember, Steve and Alan sowed in some subclover. And that's been tilled into the ground. We have a, little, a few pieces of, of those plants left. And those have given us a nice carryover supply of nitrogen and certainly added plenty of organic matter into the garden. If you have trouble finding coal crop transplants, you could direct seed them. Some research has been done by that, on that by OSU specialists of direct seeding broccoli in the fall. You've got to get it done early though, and, and certainly it would need plenty of extra irrigation to get growing. Well, DJ, let's get this finished up and then we'll get out the cottonseed hulls and try to get these puppies covered up and, and keep that soil cool. Okay. Well, as with most transplants, these have a very small root system right now. And even though we've spaced them alternating down the row to be right next to our soaker hose, they still need watering as soon as you plant them. And we've mixed in a little bit of fertilizer solution as well. And then right away, we've put down cottonseed hull mulch and again, you want to moderate that soil temperature. If the soil is left bare, it's going to get up around 105, 110 degrees on a hot day. We want to make sure that those roots will stay cool and continue growing. They might ne not necessarily be killed by the heat, but they'll just stop growing and that starts to stress the plants. Well, the next step in this elaborate setup that we have is some shade cloth. And uh, that's to keep the temperature down on the foliage for the first few weeks of life. When we get it to mid-September, we'll be able to pull that off. 
And then DJ and I have set up some remade. Again, it's the spun bonded polyester that we've used quite a bit. Screens out insects that might fly in there, such as flea beetles, cabbage loopers that might want to be laying eggs this time of year and so forth. And maybe it'll keep some of our deer problems at bay as well. And while we finish getting this set up, I'm going to pick up some seed. Let's come, go on over to the other raised bed and get some of those planted for the fall as well. Well, another trick to fall planting is if you're sowing things from seed, you want to dig things a little deeper than you would in the spring. The surface of that soil is hot, as I mentioned before, and so you want to plant into moisture and do a little deeper trench than you normally would. Now, in this bed in the spring, we had our plant a row for the hungry campaign of different lettuces, and uh, there haven't been any legumes in here for a while. And so since we're going to plant some royal burgundy purple bush beans, we want to inoculate those with some legume inoculant and make sure that we get a good establishment of those nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil so we'll get a good yield on the beans this fall. Now I've just taken a cup of water, I'm going to pour in a few beans, enough for my planting, and uh, just swirl them around and pour the water off. And then you just take your legume inoculant and sprinkle it inside. Now this inoculant uh, needs to be bought for the current year. This one has a date on it that says December 31, 95. And I've kept this in the refrigerator since the spring, so it'll stay nice and cool. And all you do is just sprinkle that on. It's just a fine black powder. And if you've ever been around soybean farmers, this is a common practice. When they're loading the hopper for planting soybeans, they always add legume inoculant so that they'll they'll grow well. It's a different type than for garden beans and you wouldn't want to use soybean inoculant on, on garden beans. It might not work quite as well. But all you do is just shake them around like that so they get a light coating and then start planting. It's really very simple. It's just enough to, to get a little coating on the beans, put those bacteria in place, and then once we get the soil covered over and get some moisture in here, those bacteria will start growing and proliferating and as soon as the seed germinate, start putting out a small root, they'll start attaching to the root, set up that nice symbiotic relationship they have and start helping to fix nitrogen. Now I'm sowing the seed a little bit heavier because this bed is going to be out in the open. We do have a little bit of a problem with predation from different critters and also because it's so hot I want to make sure I get a, a nice thick planting. And again, you want to cover these over right away. Make sure you get some moisture on there. Those will be up in a few days. And the reason we planted the bush type is that pole beans might not make planting this late in the season. It's, it's early September. We can always get a frost in mid-October, although we should, shouldn't until the end of the month. But just in case we want something that's going to be harvested fairly quickly. And we put the purple potted ones in because we have a lot of children out in the garden and it's easier for them to see those pods. And if you have kids who like to garden, that would make it more fun for them as well. Well, I've got some other seed here that I'm going to put in. There's still time to put in some cucumbers, especially if you're in southeastern Oklahoma. If you're in northwestern Oklahoma where it cools off a little more rapidly, you might want to be prepared to put some kind of a frost protection over the cucumbers, but you do have time to plant them. I'm going to plant some parsley because that's very cold tolerant and any good salad or any other kind of baked good that requires parsley is better if you have fresh parsley. Then I'll be putting in some summer squash and next week we'll start sowing our lettuce and our goal is going to be to try to have some fresh vegetables all through the winter.